Graffiti King here on failed franchises. And this is such an interesting concept because I have two books on formulas. One is on million dollar product creation and the other one includes emotional triggers that are used in successful products. So I know the formulas and I've set them up so you can learn them as well. And there are many savvy people who also know formulas. And I'm thinking right at the moment about film studios. And what they want to do is use the formula to create a franchise. Everyone knows that if you can create a product and then have a sequel or a universe, as they say with the uh, Marvel comic books, right, the MCU or the DC universe, uh, you can really, you can make more money, first of all, but you can also lower your cost by averaging out the upfront expense. A one-time movie or a one-time book is very risky and very expensive to launch. So you want to think that, hey, I can make four John Wicks or a whole bunch of Mission Impossibles or 97 Star Wars movies, right? You've got a lot of upfront costs and effort in terms of getting the audience to know about it in the bag. So your actual cost over time goes down because you are extending your product, right? And that phrase, product extension, is pretty common. But sometimes, even with all this knowledge, with knowing the formulas, with having armies of people working on something, it fails. And I was reading an article about the John Carter movie starring Taylor Kitsch, I think is how you pronounce his name. And I've seen him in other things, and he's good enough. And the movie, I saw it, I thought it was okay, but it failed. That is, it didn't make multiples of its cost back, and it didn't inspire a desire in the audience for multiple sequels. I think in the long run, it'll probably break even, but that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for multiples, right? And the article was pretty good about why it failed. Uh, it was too expensive, so it was hard to make the money back. And it just didn't have life to it. And that is a risk that anyone using a formula has to understand up front. That sometimes something just doesn't gel. Right, And the actor was good, and there were other actors in it who were good. And the source material is very rich. It's based on Edgar Rice Burroughs' John Connor of Mars books. I think he wrote 22 or 23, something like that. They were very popular around the early 20th century. Uh, you know, they were like pulp novels, but he was very good. He, he created a real world, so they're hoping to transfer that to not only one movie but multiple movies. Again, their goal was to create a franchise, and again, it didn't work. And I think, again, the understanding is you can know the formula, you can apply it, you can have lots of people contributing who also know the formula, and if it doesn't gel, either in the creative phase or the marketing phase or with the audience, you just have to shrug your shoulders and say, okay, that didn't work, and we're going to move on. And they did move on. Uh, and I think there's a recent example with the Batgirl movie that didn't work out. And, you know, there's going to be a thousand postmortems, but it just didn't work. And it's unfortunate for the people involved. You know, you don't want to wish harm on people who put in an honest effort but if it didn't work, it didn't work. And they were using a proven formula and a proven audience, right? Like there's an audience for the Batman genre and Batgirl, you know, could have been a good movie. Maybe it will be a good movie one day, but the people who own the product 
decided it wasn't worth releasing. And that itself might change, but it just didn't work. John Carter didn't work. I'm sure there's other examples where, you know, they just didn't have enough spark to them. So I would say, uh, study the formulas. Again, we have two books. One is called Graffiti King's Guide to Million Dollar Product Creation. The other is Graffiti King's Guide to Marketing Manipulation. And both of those are chock full of formula instruction and lots of examples. The first book has 120 case studies. Now that was a book about success. So I'm sure I could have come up with 500 case studies of formula-based products that didn't work, and that's okay. So understand that a lot of what we consume has a either hidden or you know subsumed formula element to it, and it's up to the creator and the marketer and the audience to agree that it has life. Okay, that's all for now. Click on the links under the message to get our books that describe the formulas behind million dollar products and the marketing that gets people involved in them. Thank you for listening.